think I've always preferred League One anyway. But in all seriousness, welcome back to another video. Obviously, last night in the Championship, we had some games going on, so we'll have a quick discussion about them. Let me know down below what you made of your team's performance last night. If they did play, or if they are playing tonight, what do you think will happen? We had Aston Villa beating Rotherham by two goals. Nil, quite a convincing performance for them. Tammy Abraham getting his first goal as a Villa player. We had Derby drawing nil-nil against Blackburn Rovers. Somehow, Derby didn't go on to win that game. They had 22 shots in that game, and nothing was going in for them. We had Ipswich drawing 1-1 with Brentford. Brentford starting the game very well. Neil Mappé once again on the score sheet for them. But going into the second half, Ipswich showed quite a bit of an improvement for that one and went ahead and finished as a 1-1 in the end. We had Leeds beat my team, Preston North End, by three goals. Neil, I don't even want to talk about Preston at the moment. We are an absolute shambles. I think at this point in time in the championship, when I'm recording this video, we have got the worst defensive record and conceding 14 goals in our last six games in the championship and we are still yet to score a goal away from home. It's just been an absolute shambles so far. But Leeds United more than deserving of that victory. You know, it was a very convincing performance for them and realistically they could have had more than three goals in that game. We also have Wigan beat Hull by two goals to one which now lifts them up to seventh in the championship. Been a very promising start to the season from Wigan. We had Stoke beating Swansea by one goal to nil and a really bizarre goal in that one. Joe Allen scoring the only goal of the game and he looks to be an absolute mile offside for that one so I'm not sure what the officials were looking at for that game but uh, Stoke got quite lucky with that goal. And then we had a really fascinating game at the Hawthorns as West Brom beat Bristol City by four goals to two. A really entertaining one this one and that win for West Brom now leaves them third in the championship. But now to the main focus of today's video. So far in this championship season there have been quite a few youngsters who have impressed me so far. So what we're going to be doing for this video guys is we're going to be counting through each championship club and I'm going to be giving you guys my opinion of who I think is their most promising upcoming youngster. So for a player to qualify for this list they can either be a permanent or a loan player and they must be 21 years old or younger. And throughout the years the championship has produced some absolutely fantastic talent. I think that that's not going to slow down anytime soon. So there really are some fantastic youngsters playing in the championship at the moment and I'll be going through who I think are the best from each individual club. So let me know down below who do you think are the most promising youngsters in your club and in the championship in general. I'd be interested to see what you guys are saying for this one. But we will go through this list in alphabetical order. Start to get out with Aston Villa and of course for them it has to be Tammy Abraham scoring his first goal for Aston Villa last night against Rotherham where he was able to link up with Jonathan Kodji. I think that if those two players are two going forward this season they really could wreak havoc. Obviously the last time Tammy Abraham was playing in the championship for Bristol City he was able to score over 20 goals and uh, they've got a real good talent in there. Already been capped by England as well and definitely got a bright future ahead of him. For Birmingham's most promising youngster I'm going to go for Wes Harding, someone who's not really featured a lot for them this season but towards the tail end of last season when Gary Monk came into Birmingham he really impressed me. One game especially I think it was against Fulham where he absolutely dominated Ryan Sessegnon in that game. So far this season you know they've had Pedersen playing left back for them, not been brilliant every single time and with Wes Harding being a right back and Colin playing in front of him he's found it hard to break into the team so far but maybe in the future I'd like to see Colin maybe play left back and Wes Harding brought in to play right back because as an upcoming player he really is one of the best in the championship. For Blackburn I'm going to go for Casey Palmer. Now Blackburn have a couple of options where you can pick from. They've got players like Ben Brereton and Adam Armstrong. I feel like Brereton especially is still quite a raw talent and we're not really sure what he'll develop into and we've not really seen a lot of him for Blackburn so far but Casey Palmer is a player who I really like. Last season when he was on loan at Derby County he was never really getting a first team opportunity and a run of games to really shine in that team. I think that if he's given that with Blackburn this season we really could see the best of him. On the whole Bolton Wanderers have quite an old squad but one player who I am going to go for with this is going to be Joe Williams coming on loan this season from Everton. A bit of controversy surrounding him so far this season as it was him and Ben Pearson who were the two players who sort of started the brawl when Preston played Bolton earlier on in the season. Of course Pearson ended up headbutting him and getting a three game suspension. But I thought last season when he was on loan at Barnsley he was probably one of the only players who really stood out to me that season. He's a defensive midfielder, very energetic, likes to show for the ball and he's quite good creatively going forward. Brentford have a lot of upcoming youngsters but for them I'm going to go for Sergi Canos, one player who I really like the look of towards the later end of last season. So far this season he's mostly been used as a substitute, has scored one goal so far, scoring on the opening day against Rotherham but playing as a winger, likes to cut inside, very skillful in the ball. Perhaps at times he can be a little bit lightweight but his technical ability really fits in to the way that Brentford like to play football and if he really does discover his form this season, you know, he does tend to be one of those confidence players. We really could see him light up this season and going forward I think he has got a massive potential. With Bristol City I'm going to have to go for Lloyd Kelly, someone who actually did score last night in that game against West Brom where they of course lost 4-2 in the end but there was a bit of a void left at left back for Bristol City after the sale of Joe Bryan in the transfer window. A massive player for them in the past Joe Bryan but Lloyd Kelly is someone who I think so far this season has actually done really well. Only 19 years old got a real good pace going forward, likes to make those overlapping runs and offers width for this Bristol City side. Exactly fits into the way they like to play and from what I've seen of him so far he's been filling the boots 
ghost of Joe Bryan this season, which is no easy task. With Dolby County, it's going to have to be Mason Mount this season, scoring two goals and picking up one assist so far, but it's not really his statistics which do the talking for Mason Mount. When you watch him over a full 90 minutes, he's a very talented footballer. You can already see that he's got that footballing brain coming on loan this season to Derby from Chelsea. He will be absolutely instrumental for them if they are to make the playoffs this season, being that main creative hub going forward who likes to link the midfield to the attack. And from watching him so far this season, you can already tell he's a player who has pedigree and going forward, he's got to be an England international in the future. Paul City, it was quite an easy choice. It has to be Jared Bowen. Last season in the Championship, scoring 14 goals, cutting inside onto his left foot and just bending it into the far corner has become a bit of a trademark for Jared Bowen. But he's also been in good form recently this season in the Championship, scoring two goals in his last two games for Hull City. He'll be an absolutely pivotal player for them if they are to survive in the Championship this season. You know, a few people suggesting that Hull may be in that relegation zone this season, but if Jared Bowen is to be on top form this season, the goals will continue to fly in for Hull and uh, he'll be an important player for them for sure going forward. And in the future, I think he will go for an absolutely massive fee when he does eventually leave Hull. With Ipswich Town, we're going to have another Chelsea loan stay. This time it is going to be Chalobah, obviously the brother of Nathaniel Chalobah playing for Watford at the moment in the Premier League. But Chalobah so far has been a player who largely has impressed me for Ipswich so far, playing as that defensive midfielder who likes to mop up in front of the back four. But what I like about Chalobah is he also offers a dimension going forward. Already scored a goal for Ipswich so far this season and as well as that, he set up the equaliser for them against Brentford last night. With Leeds United, it's got to be their goalkeeper, Peacock Farrell. Last night against us, he had a very good game. Didn't really have much to do, but he had a couple of saves to make. One really good one from Callum Robinson, cutting inside from the right-hand side, looking to bend it into the top corner, but Peacock Farrell managed to go ahead and tip that one over the cross. But and so far for Leeds this season, obviously they've had a very good defensive record. A lot of that has been attributed to how good he has been so far this season. Bursting onto the scene last season, he's managed to retain that number one spot and has recently made his international debut as well. So the future is very bright for a keeper like Peacock Farrell and I'd like to see what he can develop to in the future. With Middlesbrough, I'm going to go for defender Dale Fry. So far this season, Middlesbrough have had a tremendous defensive record and when they lost Ben Gibson, you know, a couple of people questioned who would go ahead and fill that void, but so far, Dale Fry has been absolutely superb. That game he had against Leeds United, I thought he was absolutely fantastic in that one and has been one of the main reasons why Middlesbrough has been so good defensively so far. Still only a very young player, but his physicality and ability to read the game suggests that in the future, he'll be a very good player. I was looking through the Millwall squad. I didn't really know who to go with, but I'm going to go for Fred Onyedima, a player who is currently out on loan, but in his career so far, he's still only 21 years old. He has played, I think, over 140 football matches, which for a 21-year-old is quite a lot. Fred Onyedima is a player who a little bit frustrating. Whenever I've seen him play, he seems to be a very fast player, you know, quite an impact player, but on the ball can be a little bit rash sometimes. His decision-making and technical ability sometimes maybe can be put into question, but even so, he's a player who has got pace going forward. I still think being 21 and playing as many football matches as he has done, I still think there is a player in there and potential in the future for him to grow into something. In the Norwich City squad, they have an absolute abundance of young talent, but the one I'm going to include for this video is going to be Jamal Lewis. So far this season, he's been a player who has really impressed me, fitting into their starting 11 so far this season, and I think he has the potential to, in the future, be a really good modern fullback, being quite good on the ball, good going forward, making those overlapping runs, a powerful player with the ball, and the ability to take someone on and go past them is just what you need to be a modern fullback. As well as that, he's also got the defensive capabilities, and being only 20 years old, he's a player who I think Norwich can really mould into a fantastic player for the future, you know. Norwich have a very good record with selling, you know, young upcoming players in the Championship, and perhaps Jamal Lewis could be the next one. Nottingham Forest, another club who has quite a few options for this, they've got some really good youngsters at the moment, and I was tempted to go for Gilles Diaz, as that will probably be the obvious choice, being on loan at Forest this season, but I'm going to go for Matty Cash, someone I've really liked the look of so far for Nottingham Forest. He's already scored two goals for them, and whenever I've seen him play, he's had an impact on this Forest squad. I've been, you know, quite critical of Forest so far on the whole this season, as a lot of their performances, especially their first four or five, were quite bland really, but someone who always stood out to me in those performances was Matty Cash whenever I saw him play. Mostly playing out on that right-hand side, whenever he does play, he seems to offer an outlet for them, and he's someone I'd really like to see more of this season. With my team, Preston North End, I'm going to go for Josh Earl. Now, Preston so far this season have been absolutely all over the place, but one positive that I took from the Reading game at the weekend was I thought that Josh Earl had a fantastic performance as a left-back. His first game of the season in the league after Andrew Hughes had been used there beforehand, but last season when he burst onto the scene when Greg Cunningham picked up an injury, he was absolutely superb that year. 
and still only 19 years old, standing at 6 foot 3, he's an absolute monster at the back for us. Going forward, he's also fantastic. I think the more game time he gets this season, the more he'll mature into that left back role. And uh, probably at the weekend against Reading was one of the only people who actually performed for that game. So fair play to Josh Hill, a really promising youngster. With QPR, it's going to have to be Eze, probably been one of their main creative outlets so far this season. Playing quite a few positions as well, playing out on either wing, either on the left or the right, and he likes to drift in centrally. And you know, when QPR was starting this season, they of course didn't have the best of starts to it. But even so, Eze was a player who always stood out to me. This season he's already gone ahead and scored two goals and even before the season did start I had quite a few QPR fans who were telling me about him and telling me to watch out for him this season and when I saw him play at Deepdale on the first game of the season he was probably the only QPR player who impressed me that day. But I think that if he has continued to be used in the right way QPR have got a really good talent on their hands there. For Reading I'm going to go for Omar Riches, the 20 year old left back. The only frustrating thing about him is that he is a bit further down in the pecking order for Reading meaning that he's not had the most first team opportunities so far this season but whenever I did see him play last season he really impressed me especially when he was coming into the side towards the tail end of last season I thought last season he had a very good debut season he likes to go forward with the ball links up well with midfield and for a young fullback his final product is actually quite good with Rotherham I'm going to go for their lone goalkeeper Rodak coming on loan from Fulham last season in League One he was absolutely fantastic for them as they were able to get back up to the championship at the first time of asking and so far this season whenever I'm seeing him play I think he's been largely impressive especially with their home games so far they've been very tight defensively and Rodak has been called on on several occasions and he's come up with the answers so uh, Rodak for Rotherham, I think he's got a really good potential. We're then going to have another goalkeeper for Sheffield United. It's going to have to be Dean Henderson coming on loan from Manchester United this season. A lot of championship clubs were interested in him, and rightly so. Last season playing in League One for Shrewsbury, he was absolutely fantastic, and making the step up to the championship for Sheffield United so far, on the whole, I think he has been very impressive. And if he continues to develop at the same rate that he's currently going at, you know, the next World Cup for England, who knows, we may see Dean Henderson in there, but uh, definitely a keeper to keep your eye on, and a very good potential indeed. We're Sheffield Wednesday and then going to go for Matt Penny. A lot of young fullbacks have made it into this list, but another one is going to make it in here. So far this season, playing as a left back for Sheffield Wednesday. The game he had against Stoke City on the whole, I've heard some very good reviews about him. One driving run he made from left back, linking up with a couple of players and then getting his shot away. Looks to be a really good talent going forward for the future. Still only 20 years old. And as Sheffield Wednesday have been quite limited in the recent transfer windows, it's important that they continue to bring players through their youth academy and Matt Penny is looking like a real prospect for the future. Then for Stoke City, I'm going to go for another defender. This time it is going to be Tom Edwards. On the whole, Stoke have a pretty old squad when you look over it. You know, their full complete squad in the championship. But Edwards is someone who I've quite liked the look of so far. A lot of the mistakes that Stoke have made defensively have really come from some of their more experienced players. I think that possibly the direction that Guy Rowett needs to look into with this Stoke squad is looking at younger players to come into that back line because so far Tom Edwards has looked decent for me. He's looked certainly better than some of the other defenders they've had so far who you would expect much more from. So for Stoke City, I'll say Edwards. With Swansea, I'm going to go with Joel Osoro, although so far this season he's not really stood out to me for Swansea so far. Swansea fans will be very interested to know from you guys what have you made of Osoro He's a very fast player, you know, tends to be quite good on the ball, can weave in and out of a couple of players, but his final product so far has been a bit all over the place. Towards the end of last season with Sunderland, he was a player who quite impressed me, you know, that was a hard side to shine in really, that Sunderland side last season, but Asoro was a player who I quite like the look of, Spurs were also interested in him, so I do think there is a player in there and definitely got potential for the future, but at the moment, not had a brilliant start to the season. For West Brom's best youngster, it is going to have to be Harvey Bonds, what a start to the season he has had, coming on loan from Leicester this season, already going ahead and scoring three goals goals and picking up two assists including another goal last night against Bristol City. He's got some absolute worldies. He burst onto the scene really on the first day of the season where he scored an absolute scorcher, bending it into the top corner against Bolton Wanderers and since then he's just continued to progress and progress. He can play in quite a few positions as well. He's played on the left and centrally so far for West Brom this season and being only 20 years old potentially we have an England starter in the future. Then finally for Wigan Athletic as their most promising upcoming youngster it is going to have to be Rhys James. What a loan signing he has been for them so far this season. Coming on loan from Chelsea, we've had quite a few players on loan from Chelsea in this list, but Rhys James has been absolutely superb for Wigan so far this season. He was probably Wigan's best player in their game last night against Hull City, and his drives going forward and his skills on the ball is absolutely fantastic to see. He's brilliant at reading the game, and his final product is also there. And considering he's only 18 years old, I think I'm actually older than this guy, which is scary to think about. He is an absolutely fantastic prospect for the future. But guys, that will wrap it up for this list of East Championship Club's most promising upcoming youngsters. So 
do you guys agree with who I've selected for each club? So let me know down below who do you think is your club's most upcoming youngster and who do you think are the best currently playing in the championship. But guys, that will now wrap it up for this video. So if you did go into enjoy, make sure you do leave a like. It is always massively appreciated. As well as that, make sure you do subscribe for some regular championship content. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.